Hey, good afternoon, peoples. Mason here from Mason X Lifestyle, and we're sitting out here today, 60 degrees in Kitty Land, and it's a beautiful day. I just love it. I figured I'd wear the shirt because, you know, to see, I'm easily recognizable that way, right? Cheers, having a power shake. <coughs> Nutrition. <laughs> That's right. So, <clears throat> if you're wondering about where Kitty Land is, Kitty Land is, well, it's like. Wakanda. It's not on a map. You have to know how to get there. <laughs> yes, I know. It's a huge bird. What was that? Oh, that's nice. I hope it comes back this way. I want to see what it is. Anyway, today we're talking about NFTs. Uh, it's the ongoing, the ongoing conversation. The NFT space is exploding. A lot of launching going on. A lot of mainstream expanding into... Uh, uh, the ma expanding it to the masses through various uh, means, uh, Rolling Stone magazine, uh, launching the Kings, King of Leon, the Tory Lanes, Pelike, um, and then various others that are happening. I mean, you've got Gronk, Ali, uh, just to name a few. So we're gonna talk about all that. So stick around if you want to. I'm just having a little. I'm just chilling outside. It's beautiful. And I'm going to give you as much info in as little time as possible. Knowing me, I, I tend to stretch it out, I know. And I go on tangents, and that's just the way it is. But anyway, if you like what I'm talking about, if you like me, I urge you to smash that like button. You know, give me some comments. Spread the love, you know. Help me out with the algorithms and stuff, you know. So long as I'm on CommyTube anyway. I don't plan on sticking around here too much rather be on bit shoot or other places so yeah so anyway here we go <clears throat> so what do we got we, we got we got the spaces it's exploding i so i know nfts man that's where it's at and i have to say it right away i gotta tell I, i'm gonna tell it like it is nft plus utility equals lucrativity mark my words and why do i say that though because there are different schools of nft uh, NFTs trending out there. Uh, you know, of course, you've got the gaming world, you've got the artistic world, uh, and you've got the pure collectible world uh, out there. And I think that for the most part, uh, there's not too many people. Hey, hey, Captain JC, how you doing, man? It's always in memory of my dad. My dad was a uh, captain and uh, flight instructor and all that. And uh, every time I see uh, a little. Uh, Playing like that, it just, yeah. Okay, so there you go. <sighs> so where was I? Yes. So the different schools of NFTs, and I've been monitoring. Well, not monitoring because, but yes, in a way, uh, going into different projects, uh, and I've been, you know, I've been buying into some of these. So I'm not like totally new to the space. I mean, we're all new to the space, but some of us have done a little bit more homework. Uh, we've uh, done the mistakes, we've gotten in when we shouldn't have, we've gotten out where we shouldn't have, we believed in things that crashed and we didn't in others that went to the moon. And uh, yeah, it's just the way things work, you know, it's a learning curve and it's part of the whole pioneering uh, effect. Now, in the last little while I've done a lot better for myself and I've been narrowing it down, fine tuning and really seeing the reoccurrence. There's, con there's a constant out there, there's a couple, but there's a constant out there right now. And we're going to talk about that. So the launching phase of most of the pro I'm not going to say all, but most of the projects have the same recurring issue, especially the ones launch launching uh, using an ETH, ETH platform. You know, the whole Uniswap, the gas fees, uh, that's already a, a huge issue. We all know that. But there's also the effect of what I call the Black Friday effect. It seems to be going on every time there's a launch right now. So people are fighting to get in to, you know, buy, and they can't, and they, they get overrun, front run. There's many terms for that. Basically wrecked. <laughs> yeah, tell it like it is. So... It's important, I think, you know, people need to take a, bre take a breath, take a little step back, you know, 
the the way things are being set up right now in this space uh, as much as we like to consider it free or a freedom environment where we can grow and the little guy can just turn out to be a millionaire well it, that is true right now and until the big shots decide to come in you know it's going to be like that so we have we have this opportunity right now and that's a great thing uh, word of warning though for people getting into the whitelist KYC crap you got to um, you got to think about what you're doing. The KYC whitelisting is basically part of a bigger agenda. And I, I, I'm not going to say much here, but there are people who have talked about it. And, you know, people in the space, people who know what's going on, people with a lot of money, too. And they know. They, can, they saw it happening. And that's what, you know, I got that from them, actually, originally. And then I did a little more research. But it's, it's very easy to see that. You know the whole crypto environment and this whole this whole world that we're in is just part of a transitional phase you know and we can benefit from it and make as much as we can and you know protect yourself now you got to realize that the kyc is basically just an artificial intelligence identity grab and the um, crypto space uh, gaming environment and the nft world uh, for until recently was kind of like uh, left out of this but they needed to find a way to get the identity from everybody uh, because well they, they need to be able to monitor these are the control freaks of the world right and uh, what better way to do it by offering these incentives uh, with conditions <laughs> You gotta love that stuff, you know? So, there's already the problem with the exchanges and the KYC, but, you know, um, other uh, exchanges do not require it, and that's what we like. At least a portion of us do. And it's not to uh, say uh, that uh, just because we don't want to conform to this KYC crap and and be able to be monitored on a global scale by uh, satellites and whatever have you just to see what every little tiny transaction I do or not to be able to profile me and and know exactly or at least have a very good guess on the weight of my wallet based on my transactions you see this in telegrams too you know people are really 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 useful idiots like like in any kind of situation you know this the useful idiots always show themselves the loyalists the the ones that need to report and expose every time that some wallet out there is doing something that oh my god that they can't benefit from that's the way i look at it they're just jealous and envious people you know i i commented something like that in one of the telegrams and said hey i said what if i as an example, what if I, I own a, a platform, I have this company, you know, and I'm, and I'm a bit of a philanthropist and I like to help out communities, go around the world and see what I can do to help. And yeah, I don't, I don't necessarily like the fame of publicity, of being out there in an institutional, institutional regulated environment. And I want to do this the way I want, you know, I want to have that choice. Well. This is what's the fun part about this is the fun part about the the crypto environment and it is that it's able it has enabled large amounts of wealth to be transferred into it to be able to do whatever whatever right and I'm only talking about the positive stuff you know the negative stuff is the negative stuff it don't matter where it is it's negative and it's not good so I'm just talking about the positive stuff so I have a company, let's say, and, and I'm helping, you know, communities out there and I work in and I, you know, bump into friends. I make new friends, other people with a bit of wealth and, you know, we work together and I want to reward them. Um, there's nothing that should stop me from sending them a large amount of, or a large, let's say, because it's always being seen as a large amount, an amount of tokens that I've creating because that is my platform and and why should I not be allowed to do that 
you know, without having to report it to the totalitarian Gestapo that's out there watching every little transaction. Oh my God, he 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 sent this over there and this and 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 then I can't get into. Yeah, that's right, because maybe you didn't do anything, and all you care about is making the extra buck on something that I created. You know. That leads me to the second school, right? The other school of thought on that is that you have a lot of hustlers who've come into the space because <laughs> an amazing amount of wealth is being able to be created by simply flipping some of this stuff. And it's, it's outrageous, but it's great. It's great. You can keep that under the radar and channel it out and and uh, buy yourself a ranch somewhere in Mexico and, and do stuff uh, for you. Like, hey, good for you, you know? That's the way I look at it. That's right. So anyway, it, you know, it's, it sounds like a tangent, but at the same time, you know, you got to think about it. You know, it's, it's important to, to, to see that that's what that's what this whole space is doing. It's opening it up to all kinds of uh, all kinds of possibilities. So that's, uh, that's about the time where I better crunch it back down. So the great things that have been happening. So Rolling Stone magazine. OK. That's mainstream enough for you? Yeah, I would say. Plus, the news has been showing it, apparently. I see these little headlines. I never watch TV, but you see the headlines. And they've been talking about NFTs, so the mainstream adoption is going to explode like like this. It's not gonna, it's not slow. Now we're going, it's going parabolic. The momentum is here, it's in. You've got um, King of Leons, okay? They, they were mainstream, but you know, DJ Blau, was the one who came out with that uh, uh, album that sold for the 12 millions. Uh, the um, 3.6 million for one track, one song. <laughs> I know, it's amazing. And you've got Tory Lanez, uh, Toronto, uh, I think he was self-produced rapper. You know, uh, awesome stuff. He's come out, made like 500 grand out of um, and selling NFTs, just three tracks, you know, just you know, 150 copies of each track. You've got Pele K, a Norwegian uh, artist that I've been following now. That um, is amazing. I, this guy, this guy's got is extremely versatile. I mean, if you watch some of Pele K's stuff and you watch the videos, his videos on his YouTube, you know the the range of uh, not to mention the range of voice he has, but the range of of music that he that he that he takes on you know everything from you know whether it's Bon Jovi or speed metal or melodic metal we shall say or anime um, songs anime theme songs uh, <laughs> to go back to Barbie doing like Barbie girl and uh, <laughs> And um, what's that other tune there? I'm blue, da ba dee da ba dao. Yeah, you remember that? Yeah. So I've been watching some of his stuff. I think that's an amazing thing to do, to be able to be so versatile, not really, you know, think about what, you know, not, not really thinking or care about, like, what's out there, just putting it out there, doing it. And I, I respect that greatly. In fact, I'm kind of from the same kind of school. I just don't have the 20 million viewers and, and 600 million views on my videos and I, I'm glad that someone like him did that. I think it's, it's really, he's really cool. He sounds like a cool chap. I mean, you know, uh, uh, yeah, so it's just, it's, uh, it's inspiring because I want to do similar things with what I can do with my voice and, and just yeah, it's just, it's just pushing me to go out and do it. So I'll probably do a couple of karaoke type uh, videos. Anything you want to hear, let me know. You know, I'm also quite open to a versatile range of, of music as well. So uh, that said, uh, let's see. So Pelike, uh, someone, and then, you know, and, and Pelike has done the NFTs with uh, Bondly. And he's, and it's, it's just an ongoing thing. Uh, in fact, uh, Pelike, shout out to you, mate. Uh, thank you a lot. Thank you for the polka pet barbecue drop. That's really cool. Adds to my uh, to my collection. I was also very surprised when I clicked on it and <laughs> saw music came on. I was like, "Hey, what's going on?" And <laughs> it's an incredible rap tune. That rap song is amazing. If you get, if you you guys have to go listen to it. I'll put the links on the uh, Open Sea uh, for Pelike. Uh, you've got to listen to that rap song on the polka pet bar on the polka pet barbecue. The lyrics are fun. They're just a lot of fun. Good job on that. 
Um, and what else? What else? What else? What else? So I said Tory Lanez. Oh yeah. So Gronk, NFL football star, right? Gronk is coming out this week with his NFT. That's right. It's all. It's going to be an auction. Uh, I don't believe that the auctions are the best way to do things because they they really keep a lot of people out of being able to reach uh, to to get any of these things. They take forever, and then the resale value. You know, there's no utility attached to it. Yeah, it's great. I got a Gronk card, blah, blah, blah. Do I have tickets for uh, his football games for the rest of my life? Do I have, uh, is it attached to a platform that's going to give me some tokens? Is it, is it doing uh, anything else uh, that's going to save me fees on a platform like, like Bondly tends to do with uh, their uh, NFTs? Uh, Bonley Finance, I have to talk about that quickly. I mean, Bonley Finance is, is definitely a great platform. It's an interesting way to do things. They came out a couple of months ago now with uh, anime style manga uh, cards that were NFTs, but each NFT is proprietary to um, a product and service that they offer, which not too many people out there are doing right now. And if they are, they're coming out with it now. So this is like, yeah, new stuff. So a lot of the artists are not seeing that part of the importance of attaching the NFT to a utility for longevity or longevity, because the secondary market is where the creation of wealth is, right? That's right, because the uh, when the resales, when 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 the NFT is being resold with a utility attached to it the value sticks to it because there's something else than just a digital picture right and that creates added value which is fun for the seller but also creates passive income for the creator because he set he has set a fee on every time that that particular nft is resold people do not see that yet in general people don't the ones who create not even the ones who create because some people are creating and not realizing that uh, yeah uh, if I if, if this thing is sold a hundred times I'm making like 10% on each sale if the value goes up each time that means I'm getting more so my royalties are, are infinite and that'd be great they don't get how to do it you know they're selling a card that you keep as a collectors just like old school collecting and I'm sorry, but that is obsolete now. I'm sorry, it's obsolete. A lot of people are going to get wrecked by buying some of these these things, and they're going to be paying insane amounts of money for it. And what's going to happen? It's not going to be worth anything. The price will drop. It will not go up. Okay? You buy, uh, uh, like, say, King of Leon's. People bought things uh, over fifty thousand dollars for digital art. I was there looking through all that. It was all auction, auctioned out, and I was like, yeah, but there's no nothing else. There's nothing else attached to it. Oh, yes, you're going to say, that's true. There is for King of Leons. I have to correct myself a little. The golden ticket, which uh, gives you four front row seats once per tour. Uh, I believe they do fly-in and SUV, luxuri luxuri luxurious SUV. You're basically well-treated, VIP, uh, but that's only six winners out of the whole thing and that's it that's it so you know if you own this art and you haven't won you know and you paid like you know fifty thousand dollars for it well okay I could just you know click right click paste if I like the art and have it and I can make a put it in a frame and have it on my wall I, I don't need that I could do that with Mona Lisa today too but that's not the point. Well, actually, that's, that is the point. The point is that it's no different. But if you have a utility attached to it, so if, let's say, that piece of art was attached to the next coming albums or the next, um, uh, I don't know, I... I you know, I don't know. I mean, they're just, I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not them. So be creative and figure it out. But... If you're able to do an ongoing utility that's attached, so whether it's tickets, albums, t-shirts, whatever, stuff that you're going to send, because I have this, I get this. 
because I have that, I have that, you know? That's very important. And so I looked at that and I realized that the cheapest, the least expensive item on the King of Leon's page was the best. The album. That's right. So you purchase the album and then you get automatically, instantly, the digital, uh, the MP3 and the WAV format of the album. So that's already great. And once the sale is over, they're going to send you the physical album, which itself becomes which itself becomes an actual collector's item and I think there's digital art that comes that's also supposed to come with that and and for 50 odd dollars worth you know it's an ETH 0.35 that that's amazing and how are they doing it well they're gonna do it on I, I realize that and I'm probably you know correct me if I'm wrong but I think that it's easy to see that they're just doing it on a printing print on demand you know, buy as many albums as you want for a certain amount of time. And then we'll make the, once we have that order, we'll put it in, we'll get the best price for it. And we'll uh, create the albums and ship them out to uh, the people. I think that's a great thing. So, like I said, the least expensive item on that page is probably worth the most. Because that has a resale value. It does. It's an ongoing resale value. It's not... It's not great. There could be other things attached to it, but that's still good. And for really, for the price compared to everything else that's on that page, there's no comparison. It's day and night. And you get yourself an album. So I bought two. One I will now open, and one I'll be able to open and enjoy. That's right. So if you're still here, I got to talk some more, a little bit more about... Uh, so I've talked about Pelike. I've talked about uh, Gronk. I've talked about... Uh, Tory Lanes briefly, uh, King of Leon's right now. What else do we got? We got uh, coming out. Yes, Ali, Muhammad Ali on Eternity. Uh, that is an amazing platform uh, built by Nick Rose. I will send. I will put a nice little link on that so you get to figure out who this guy is. And also, what Eternity? I've been talking about Eternity for the last month before it all came out, and I was like, "This is going to be big. This is going to, this is going to help really, you know, spread towards the mainstream, and it's going to attract a lot of people." Now, again, the Ali uh, 50 year, uh, 50 50 year fight of the century doesn't seem to have much utility, but that's going to be obviously uh, an ultimate uh, collector's. Uh, uh, item uh, you know great uh, somebody out there is going to say I want it and they're just going to have it and they won't care about the price that's just the way that works but the value of it the, the long term value is uh, only going to work if there's some kind of of utility I mean what would you do for that well you, it's, it's Ali it's boxing okay so let's see we got uh, whatever the biggest championship is in in boxing uh, you make sure that because you own this Ali uh, NFT you now have um, a center front center spot uh, at all the championships uh, uh, the heavyweight championships uh, anything connected to what Ali uh, was and uh, you're able to just go there I mean that that's incentive you see then you own this thing it's gonna I don't know how much it's gonna go for I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna predict uh, I'm gonna predict under uh, nothing under a million bucks under nothing under a million dollars for the alley collection nothing just because it's Muhammad Ali and when they're gonna do Elvis Presley and uh, Marilyn Monroe and James Dean and uh, all the biggest names, same thing is going to happen. And that's going to work for a while. That's going to work for a while. So good luck to all uh, people jumping in on that. I'm just going to save the pictures and, you know, that's it. I'm more interested in what's going on on platforms that offer our ongoing incentive. So, you know, NFTs for NFT mining. So you buy an NFT and now you are go on this platform, whether it's gaming or other, and now I can stake... There's, a, there's something called a staking, which basically means I'm putting in my NFT, which is connected to a value, and I'm putting it in uh, this platform, it's, and it's now going to be used to mine crypto. 
that makes it worth hanging on to, doesn't it? It also creates added value if I want to resell it. I've done that. I've done that and it works. I freaking I fracking 60 next on one particular one and I uh, two three four five six six eight X I eight X on another and that's <laughs> that created some serious leverage man I I freaked out that day I was like I did it on the same day too I was like oh really nice to see extra zeros added to your uh, account you know <laughs> yeah anyway just that said I mean this is what you got to keep in mind so if you again if you made it this far now you know what's where where it's at the the NFTs connected to utility will create lucrativity you'll know now why I say it all the time NFT plus utility equals creativity uh, lucrativity not creativity and uh, see even the, that see see what I mean I mean it, it just pops the horns <laughs> when you hear that ding 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 chicken wings for dinner Tofu, tofu if you're vegan. That's right. That's uh, Crypto Kirby. So, all right. So uh, that's going to be enough for today. The ensemble of all that is that I'm seeing in all the telegrams, the common, the common denominator is the same. You've got people who uh, bitch and moan because they can't get into a pool and they can't... Uh, Maybe because they forgot their bathing suit. I don't know. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> but they can't get in on the mining pool. They can't. Da -da -da -da, and then the, the, everything blows up. So the open sea market crashes. I mean, I got you know my my simple note is this. Now that I've been through half a dozen sales, seeing the same thing happen on every single one of them. I uh, think that the idea is if you're interested in it. Keep an eye on it. Be there at the moment of the sale. Watch it crash. Watch the bitching. Watch the moaning. Wait for the token to come out. Uh, don't don't even try to buy right there and then. Uh, and if you do, like size it because some of these things go really fast. So you have like anywhere from two minutes to twenty minutes. That first twenty minutes is crazy. And then what you want to do is uh, watch your gas. The gas fees they they some, sometimes suddenly drop. Poof, get in on there. You don't have to put these extreme uh, percentages of slipping that I've seen people, oh yeah, put 20% slippage and you'll be fine. No, you won't. No, you won't. In fact, that's where you'll fail most of the time. And you know, yeah, correct me if, yeah, correct me, of course, because everything I, I you know, everything that people say is always gonna be questionable, but <laughs> I put 1% slippage and I would say that 80% of the time I've gotten through because I chose the time to do it not because I did it's just because I chose the time when to do it okay right so for eternity I got in on the urn at what was it four dollars it's hovering anywhere between eight and thirteen this thing actually has a very very strong potential to uh, keep swinging upwards not financial advice I'm just saying it's what I'm doing um, super farm oh and then this thing about super farm and eternity uh, working together partnering to create uh, more utilities for uh, probably for the eternity NFTs good job Elio good job Nick you guys know where it's at if my wallet gets big and I plan if my when my wallet gets big enough I want to meet <laughs> because I like the philanthropy uh, behind Nick Rose I like what you're doing dude um, I love Greece I was out there for I spent some time over there awesome I've been wanting to help communities build uh, things so I uh, you know yes I'm, I'm about creating wealth in order to be able to do these kind of things really like what you're doing Nick cheers uh, Elio well you know you're you're doing what you're doing you know young you're young you got lucrative mind you're smart you've helped me get into a few projects that I've that I've actually really generated quite a bit of of, uh, of wealth in the last uh, two months so thank you and uh, Bondly is a great platform in fact Elio turned me on to Bondly so that's a connection right there and I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that really, if you get anything out of this video, 
uh, just, you know, give me some love, man. Give me some love. You know, I don't really care about having a million subscribers, but I imagine the more people would see things like that, the better it is. Because out there, you have a lot of sponsors, a lot of sponsored material. You have a lot of things that talk about one thing, but never really show the... I, I think, you know, it's the philosophy is important. It's nice to to look at you know charts and markets and ups downs and stuff everyone you know anyone with with the, that kind of mind and it's important to have it don't get me wrong i mean i'm an anarcho capitalist mindset at this point and uh, i am a philanthropist as well and and i think these things work well together i believe in freedom of choice and and everything that goes along with it i can't stand the totalitarian environment that we are being subjected to and um well i want to make the most out of it while i still am around and uh if i can help out there i will so it's right now about building the big bags getting the big bags filled and i'll be then able to really speak so for now guys i'm gonna let you go with this love you all uh let's work together uh on the last note i do want to say that i find it completely uh, irresponsible to be selective or be on a telegram environment in a telegram environment where there is a community a closed community environment in this space right now we all help each other there's no competition there's no competition. We are the pioneers. There's no competition. It's all about growing this space. Next year and two years from now, three years from now, okay. But for now, everything that everybody does is important to the space. Every step of the way. It's the shovel building the tunnel, you know. We have to build it from all ends so that we meet and grow this thing in the smartest most lucrative most uh, well lucrative i think it's just uh, we need to create abundance and we need to do it now okay because when when it all closes up and is totally controlled we will have what we have and that's it so get out there make some things of yourselves fill up those wallets Make the right choices. Make the best choices you can. Okay? And move forward. Just move forward. There's always something new coming out. Cheers, peoples. Banzai!